Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Xiao Dongyue. I'm a professor at the Capital Normal University, and I welcome you to my course of skills for writing and publishing academic papers in English. And today's topic is on what is proper academic English writing. Before we start our talk, let's see the vocabulary or the words for this talk. I'll do you a favor. Please read after me to familiarize your ear for the terms, for the words, for the vocabulary I'll talk, I'll mention in this talk. Are ready? Read after me. Abstract. Abstract. Introduction. Introduction. Method. Method. Results. Results. Discussion. Discussion. Conclusion. Conclusion. References. References. Footnote. Footnote. Endnote. Endnote. Getline. Getline. Academic writing. Academic writing. Formulaic academic writing. Formulaic academic writing. Coherent structure. Coherent structure. Framework. Framework. Elaborate. Elaborate. Outline. Outline. Argumentative purpose. Argumentative purpose. Research gap identification. Research gap identification. Problematizing approach. Problematizing approach. Rational tone. Rational tone. Relevant content. Relevant content. Cohesive style. Cohesive style. Hatching words and expressions. Hatching words and expressions. Signal words and expressions. Signal words and expressions. Meta commentary expressions. Meta commentary expressions. Reader awareness. Reader awareness. Now, first of all, I have these questions for you. First question is what is discipline based academic writing? We all know that we have all different disciplines, and each dif discipline may have its own uh, expected or guidelined uh, writing styles, and you, you better keep this in mind. So, what is discipline based academic writing? The second question is what are the common lexical forms of academic writing? Meaning the grammatical requirements for writing. Um, this is what I'm saying. You cannot write English from Chinese because you're thinking Chinese way and you cannot produce good English. Okay, the third question is what checkers a writer needs to keep in mind uh, while writing? The checkers, I mean the points that you have to be mindful. Where is thematic and lexical requirements uh, that facilitate you to do good academic writing? And the first question is, how can a writer polish his academic English writing? In other words, you finish the manuscript and you think this is wonderful, but when you get a, a native speaker to look at it, is going to find, wow, there are so many problems, and how can you polish? And more importantly, what an editor will recommend you for good writing? With these questions in mind, let's start today's talk. So the first topic I want to discuss today is why is academic writing formulaic? Now, we have to keep in mind that academic writing is formulaic, such that specific types of sentences and phrases are commonly used. And this is much different from the literal writing or newspaper writing, 
for which variability and validity is much needed. Well, bear in mind that academic writing, it's special kind of writing. It's not for everybody to read. It's for um, scholars or students of particular discipline to read. So we have to keep this in mind. And also, academic writing is discipline-based with specifically developed and demanded coherent structure, cohesive style, rules of thumb for writing. When I say discipline-based, is, for instance, for psychology, for education, for literature, for history, for mathematics, for chemistry, for physics, for econo economics, you name it, whatever. And there are some specific requirements for your own discipline in regard to how to write good academic papers. And some academic writing even has specific manuals for presenting or displaying text in tables, figures, graphs, references, etc. Like or psychology, we have what is called American Psychological Association Manual. It's called APA style. There is also the AMA style and the Chicago style. When you know this, you have to make sure that the references or the tables, the figures, uh, would follow the expected guidelines for writing. Besides, what is coherent structure? Basically, it means or refers to the organization of ideas in a text. It is the order in which ideas are presented and the structure of a text is its framework. So, how the sentences are structured, how the um, paragraphs are constructed, so there is a topic, sentence, the uh, body part, the transit words, you name it, okay? And the framework helps the writers and readers to know where specific ideas are presented. So we, we see these words, you know, we see the flow of thoughts, and we know what to expect for the next step. And also, different types of texts require different structures as they reflect how different ideas are presented. Taken together, that's called coherent structure. Okay, so let's have an example of a coherent structure for newspaper writing. We all know that newspaper articles are typically written in a kind of a pyramid structure in which the most important information is presented at the top and the rest information is presented in decreasing order of the importance. So the newspaper readers expect to look for answers of what, who, when, where, why, and how facts of a given event or incident at multiple levels. So this is called a five W's. It gives you a quick description of what the reporter or journalist want to present to you. So that's a typical newspaper starts writing. And it's based on a shared understanding between the writers and the readers to cover news of the public interest. So newspaper writing expects all journalists to follow the algorithm of the writing on multiple levels. Well, I don't have to say the rest because this is not about newspaper writing. I'm just giving you an example of what a coherent structure means for different types of writing. Now let's look at a coherent structure of academic writing. Specifically, the coherent structure of academic writing has a standard format with formulaic headings for different sections and it's comparable to the eight lect writing in Chinese history. What is eight lect writing? Well, this is uh, you know, the classic Chinese writing for, um, for the Chinese um, to make your, your cases or to present your ideas, particularly for the um, civil servant examination. 
as we say, the 科举考试。So let's look at for the coherent structure of academic writing. What section does it have? It has a title, abstract, introduction, method, result, discussion, conclusion, and references. Okay. So you have to have this eight parts for the proper academic writing. But for the eight lect writing or classic Chinese writing, what does it have? Here is an example that I'm giving you. So for the eight lect essay writing, the first step is to explain the topic. The second step is to elaborate the topic. The third step is to outline the topic. The fourth step is to begin the topic. The fifth step is to problematize the topic. The sixth step is to explain the sense of the topic. The seventh step is to elaborate the sense of the topic. And the eighth step is to conclude the topic. You got it. That is the what is known about the eight lecture essay writing. Thanks God, we don't have to do this kind of writing right now. If you do, you have to follow the procedure. To give you an example of the、uh, eight lecture writing, I'm presenting to you this as written by Wang Ao of Ming Dynasty, and I don't have to translate everything、uh, in English, but just give you an example, you know, of different parts. Just I'm showing you the coherent structure. Of academic writing, one way or another. So conclude. Let's see a summary of the eight lecture、like、essay. It is formulaic, eight steps, step by step. Second, it is structured. Each part should have its own sentences、um, written for specific purposes. Third. It is purely written language. It's not our language. It's written language. You better make sure that you have to write in such a way. This is why later,、um, for the Chinese language development, we have the what is called a Bai Hua Wen. That means commoners' language development. Otherwise, if you have to communicate in such elaborate written forms. It will be awful. We don't know what to talk about. And the fourth, it is Confucian style of writing, and finally, it is Confucian classics dependent. When you do eight lecture、like、writing.